everyone, it's Miss Marie, and I'm about to take Hero out for his walk, and it's really cold out, so I'm going to be wearing my jacket, my boots, i got to get on a hat, a scarf, <laughs> it's so cold out, i got to get all this good stuff on, some mittens, and my mask, and we're going to be going out into the cold. Um, I dress like this in the winter time because I like to be outside for a while. I don't want to rush his walk. So we're going to be nice and toasty. And when I come back, I'm going to read you some really fun stories about hats and coats and mittens as we celebrate all those nice things that keep us warm in the winter time. All right, see you soon. All right, everybody, back inside and I am ready to sing our snowflake song. Still no snow, I'm gonna keep trying. Ready? <laughs> snowflakes, snowflakes, dance around. Snowflakes, snowflakes, touch the ground. Snowflakes, snowflakes in the air. Snowflakes, snowflakes everywhere. Snowflakes, snowflakes, dance around. Snowflakes, snowflakes, touch the ground. Terrific! Are you ready to hear some really great stories about keeping warm with our hats and coats and gloves and mittens? All right, great. Let's start. Alrighty, so for our first book today to celebrate our love of warm wintry clothes to keep us warm when we go outside in this cold, I have one of my old favorites. It's called The Jacket I Wear in the Snow. And it's by Shirley Neitzel, and it's illustrated by Nancy Winslow Parker and published by Scholastic. And this book is really fun because it's a rebus. That means that certain words are substituted with a picture so you can read along. That's really fun, right? So it's the jacket I wear in the snow. Plus it's kind of repetitive, so you'll, you'll learn it. This is the jacket I wear in the snow. This is the zipper that's stuck on the jacket I wear in the snow. This is the scarf, woolly and red, that's caught in the zipper that's stuck on the jacket I wear in the snow. This is the stocking cap for my head that matches the scarf, woolly and red, that's caught in the zipper that's stuck on the jacket I wear in the snow. Good, I think I can hear you saying the words. That's excellent, here we go. Now we know what these are. These are the mittens that hang from each arm that I wear with the stocking cap for my head that matches the scarf, all woolly and red, that's caught in the zipper that's stuck on the jacket I wear in the snow. Are you helping me read along with all those pictures? Excellent. What else are we missing? Oh, a sweater. This is the sweater, all itchy and warm, that meets the mittens that hang from each arm that I wear with the stocking cap for my head that matches the scarf, woolly and red, that's caught in the zipper that's stuck on the jacket I wear in the snow. <laughs> These are the jeans, stiff in the knee, that go under the sweater, all itchy and warm, that meets the mittens that hang from each arm that I wear with the stocking cap for my head that matches the scarf all woolly and red that's caught in the zipper that's stuck on the jacket I wear in the snow. Good. Oh boy. These are the boots too big for me that cover the jeans stiff in the knee that go under the sweater all itchy and warm that meets the mittens that hang from each arm that I wear with the stocking cap for my head that matches the scarf all woolly and red that's caught in the zipper that's stuck on the jacket I wear in the snow. Do you get it? Oh, <laughs> these we need to. This is long underwear, bunchy and hot, that is stuffed in the boots too big for me that cover the jeans, stiff in the knee, that go under the sweater all itchy and warm that meets the mittens that hang from each arm that I wear with the stocking cap for my head that matches the 
scarf, all wooly and red, that's caught in the zipper, that's stuck on the jacket I wear in the snow. You can start eating with me too. These are the socks, wrinkled a lot, and they don't even match, look at that, that are pulled over the underwear, bunchy and hot, that's stuffed in the boots, too big for me, that cover the jeans, stiff in the knee, that go under the sweater, all itchy and warm, that meets the mittens that hang from each arm, that I wear with the stocking cap for my head, that it matches the scarf, all woolly and red, that's caught in the zipper, that stuck on the jacket, I wear in the snow. Oh dear. These are the tears that fell from my eyes. Why do you think the child is crying? Looks like they knocked over their snowman. Oh, there's crying there. That dripped on the socks, wrinkled a lot, that are pulled over the underwear, bunchy and hot, that stuffed in the Boots too big for me that cover the jeans, stiff in the knee, that go under the sweater, all itchy and warm, that meets the mittens that hang from each arm, that I wear with the stocking cap for my head, that matches the scarf, woolly and red, that's caught in the zipper, that's stuck on the jacket I wear in the snow. You're reading. That's great. Oh, this is the mother who heard my cries and wiped the tears that fell from my eyes and loosened the scarf woolly and red and stripped off the stocking cap from my head and unpinned the mittens that hung from each arm and unbuttoned the sweater all itchy and warm and unzipped the boots too big for me and straightened the jeans stiff in the knee. Oh, they're going inside. And smoothed the long underwear, bunchy and hot, and pulled up the socks that were wrinkled a lot. <laughs> like they're having a fight with the cat over the sock. My dog likes to steal socks. When she unstuck the zipper of the jacket I wear in the snow. And now the child's happy again. A donut and some hot cocoa and some other good little snacks. And that is the end of the story. And I hope you read along with me and I really like that one because you really do need all those things to keep warm, but it can be a bit irritating, especially if you want to get out of them fast. If you've had a, a little accident on your sled or you're upset about something, you want to get inside fast, it can take a while. But luckily mom was there to uh, swoop in and save the day. So anyway, I really like that one. The, mitten, I, the jacket I wear in the snow. All right, are you ready to hear a story on the board? It's actually more of a song and it's based on a story that I know you all know. Now, if you had to think of what's the most important thing besides the jacket when you go outside in the cold, what do you think that might be? Mittens, right? You need mittens to keep yourself warm, your hands warm, because when your hands get cold, you can feel pretty miserable, right? So this is the story called The Mitten, but we're going to do it as a song because I think everybody kind of knows the story of the mitten. It's a really fun story. And um, I would really like to do it as a song instead. But I'll tell it to you really quick, just in case you forget. The story of the mitten is about a little child who loses a mitten in the snow and doesn't really realize it till they go home. And when they come back out to find the mitten, the mitten has been destroyed or stretched beyond recognition because a whole bunch of animals have moved into it. Yeah. So in this story, we're just going to have the child off to the side because we're going to know that the mitten was already dropped. Okay. And here's how it goes. You ready? The mitten in the snow, the mitten in the snow. Help us freeze, please, so we won't freeze the mitten in the snow. Now let's see who comes first. The mole squeezes in, the mole squeezes in. Help us please so we won't freeze the mitten in the snow. You see a little mole poking out? The rabbit squeezes in, the rabbit squeezes in. Help us please so we won't freeze the mitten in the snow. Who's coming next? Oh, my favorite, the hedgehog. You see the prickly hedgehog? 
The hedgehog squeezes in, the hedgehog squeezes in. Help us please so we won't freeze the mitten in the snow. Now who's next? Let's see. Who, who, who's next? What'd you guess? It's the owl. The owl squeezes in, the owl squeezes in. Help us please so we won't freeze the mitten in the snow. Oh, let's put in this guy. Let me know what this one's called. It's not a skunk. It kind of looks like it because this one's black and white, but it's called a badger. A badger. You ready? The badger squeezes in. The badger squeezes in. Help us please so we won't freeze. The badger squeezes in. Okay, what's next? Oh. A fox. The fox squeezes in. The fox squeezes in. Help us please so we won't freeze the mitten in the snow. Now, do you know who could be next? This looks pretty full in there, but is there always room for one more? The bear, oh my goodness. The bear squeezes in, the bear squeezes in. Help us please so we won't freeze the mitten in the snow. Now, who is going to ruin this? Who's gonna be one animal too many? Could it be this little teeny tiny mouse? But what if the mouse settles in on the bear's nose? Oh my goodness. Here we go. A mouse squeezes in, a mouse squeezes in. Help us please so we won't freeze the mitten in the snow. Now the mouse is on the bear's nose and I bet that's pretty tickly. And what happens when your nose starts to tickle sometimes? Here we go. The bear says, achoo! The bear says, achoo! All the animals fly out of the mitten in the snow. When the bear sneezes, the mitten flies apart. And all the animals get scattered into the snow. And that is the end of that story. And when the little child comes back later, the animals will be all gone. But the mitten will either be broken it will be so stretched that no little child could wear that mitten. Look at that. <laughs> that mitten is way too big for that child now. And that is the end of The Mitten in the Snow, which is based on The Mitten, the book. All right. Let's take a little break for some bell songs. All righty. Does everybody have the, the jingle bells that came with their craft bag this month? Excellent. All right, let's do our bell songs. This is gonna be our last week with the bell songs because next week we're starting a new craft bag. So we'll start some new songs, maybe with something else or just songs and no bells. But let's let's try this one, ready? Shake your bells in the air, in the air. Shake your bells in the air, in the air. Shake your bells in the air, then shake them over there. Shake your bells in the air, in the air. Good. Shake your bells on the side, on the side. Shake your bells on the side, on the side. Shake your bells on the side and smile really wide. Can I see your smiles? Good job. Shake your bells on the side, on the side. Shake your bells way down low, way down low. Shake your bells way down low, way down low. Shake your bells way down low, then shake them really slow. Shake your bells way down low, way down low. Good job, good job. Should we do the ring your bells, boy, ring those bells and turn around? Right? Ring those bells and turn around. Ring those bells and turn around. Ring those bells and turn around. Ring those bells and touch your toes. Ring those bells and touch your toes. Ring those bells and touch your toes. Ring them for all to hear. 
Good job, everybody. Good job. How about Frere Jaca? Ready? Frere Jaca, Frere Jaca, Dorme who? Dorme who? Sonny Le Martina, Sonny Le Martina, Ding and Dong, Ding and Dong. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John. Morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing. Ding and dong, ding and dong. Good job, everybody. Good job. How about jingle, jingle, little bell? Ready? Jingle, jingle, little bell. I can ring it oh so well. Ring it fast, ring it slow, ring it high, ring it low. Jingle, jingle, little bell, I can ring it oh so well. Terrific, everybody. You did a great job with those bell songs. I hope you enjoyed those. Go keep those bells. They're yours to ring whenever you feel like it now. All right, let's get back to some stories. All right, are you ready for another fun story about another important item you might need to bring out into the snow or the cold? This scarf. And this one is written and illustrated by Tatiana Fini, and it's called Little Owl's Orange Scarf. I don't know if you can tell, but in that picture, Little Owl doesn't look so happy. I think he's got his angry eyes on. <laughs> Let's see. Let me see some nice orange yarn here and some knitting needles. And this is published by Alfred Knopf in New York. Oh, and look, it was a fall day with leaves coming down. Little Owl lived with his mommy in a tree house at the edge of the city park. We actually have an owl family in the park by my house. You can hear them at night. He loved adding numbers, eating ice cream, and riding his scooter. He usually loved a surprise, but he did not love his new scarf. It was itchy. Ooh, we've all had a scarf where it had that was too itchy, right? It was too long. Oh my goodness, that is a little too long for a small owl. And it was far too orange. There's no doubt this is very orange. Um, maybe some people really like orange, but apparently Owl does not. You need to wear your new scarf, said Mommy. It will keep you nice and warm. <laughs> look at his face. He does not look happy. He's got mad eyes. Angry eyes. Little Owl tried very hard to lose his new scarf. Look here, he's wrapping a present to Grandpa, and he's used it as the bow. I don't think that's going to work. He's tried putting it in a trunk and sending it to Peru. Um, I don't think that's going to work either. But Mommy always found it. You'll need to wear this scarf today, said Mommy. It's your class trip to the zoo. <laughs> the face, like, oh no, not that. Don't think to wear that. Little Owl came home from the zoo with all sorts of stories. Grrr, thumpity thump, munch, munch, snap. He's telling all about the animals. But something's missing from his story. But little owl came home from the zoo without his scarf. Hmm. What happened to it? Was that purpose? I don't know. Mommy called the zoo. Nobody had found little owl's scarf. Never mind, she said. We can make another scarf. And this time we will do it together. What do you think? How's Al going to help out? The yarn shop was more exciting than Little Owl expected. Look, there they are looking at the yarn. And I don't know if you can see these little dash dots from Little Owl's eye to the blue yarn up here. That's the one that is. <clears throat> After a lot of hard work, Little Owl's scarf was finished. Look, look how excited Little Owl is jumping up and down. <laughs> It was soft, it was just long enough, and it wasn't orange. Little Owl loved it. 
think I prefer the blue scarf as well. But, you know, everybody has this. Especially on visits to the zoo. Does anybody see what could have happened to that Lauren, long orange itchy scarf? Who could wear that? Oh. <laughs> and that is the end of the story in this end paper. Blue. It's the new scarf color. Orange and then blue. And that was a really fun one. So I have one more short story for us. It comes from a song that everybody knows, Ba Ba Black Sheep. And this one, they've kind of long, made the, the song a little bit longer and added some extra lyrics. So I want you to pay attention when I'm reading the book to what's happening to the sheep, where the wool comes from for the scarves and everything in the book. What's happening to his wool? All right. Baba Black Sheep. And this one is uh, illustrated and written by Jane Cabrera. And it is published by Holiday House. And let's see, there's some little fun balls of yarn that have little smiley faces on them. They all are black from the black sheep. And here it says, follow the wool. Uh-oh, follow the wool. Okay, let's follow the wool. Ba ba black sheep. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, miss, yes, miss, three bags full. I see this blue yarn still winding its way through the story. One for a hat and one for mittens and one for messy muddle for the kittens. Oh, look, and there's more blue yarn going through the whole story. And here we see little kittens wearing hats and mittens and playing with some black yarn. Hmm. Let's just look at the fluffy sheep here. Probably still looks pretty fluffy there. Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Three bags full. I still see that blue yarn going through, too. One for a swing and one for a vest and one for the bright blue eggs in the nest. Oh, look. You can see the, the wool has been made into straps for a string. It's been made into a vest for this nice bird and even into a nest for these eggs. And I still see that blue string, the blue yarn going through, though. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Three bags full. He looks a little less fluffy, doesn't he? And there's that blue yarn going all the way through. One for a shepherd and one for Bo Peep and one for lots of small, soft sheep. Oh, look, they've all got a little sweater from the black sheep. And sweater here, sweater there, all made from that pretty wool. And here's that blue wool still winding its way through. What does the sheep look like now? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Are you ready? It's looking a little less fluffy. Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, miss, yes, miss, three bags full. And there goes that blue yarn winding its way through. One for a beard and one for a wig and one for a tea cozy for a pig. <laughs> I see a beard, I see a wig. And I see a tea cozy, but it could be on the teapot or on somebody's head. Both are very silly. And there's that blue yarn winding its way through the story. You ready to see the sheep? Uh-oh. <laughs> ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, miss, yes, miss, three bags full. And I still see that blue yarn. You see that going through the story? One for the children and one for the missus and one for a baby all covered in kisses. Oh, look, all the children are getting things to play with. Blankets and tents and all kinds of fun things. And there's a baby blanket and a blanket for the mom. And there's that blue yarn still going through the story. Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? No, miss, no, miss, no bags full. Oh, my goodness. He's all naked. He's got no, no wool left. And there's that blue yarn. Still going through. Oh, even the spider has made a nest, uh, a, a web out of the, the blue yarn. Ba, ba, black sheep, thank you for the wool. Thank you, thank you for so many bags full. Oh, sorry we took it all. Sorry it's gone. Until your wool grows back, please put these on. And look, they've made all kinds of nice things for the sheep to wear while he's cold, waiting for his wool to grow back. A dress and a oh, what's this? A scarf and some socks and a hat. The 
looks pretty warm and cozy. And that is the end. So we followed it to the end, and I guess it became, did it become that dress? Let's see. It did. There it starts off there. Somebody has knit it into something for the sheep. <laughs> I think that's the same blue yarn. Very nice. I like that. And I like that in the end, they all feel bad that sheep need something warm. So they make them something. There you go. There's that blue yarn again. That's a fun book. I like that they added some lyrics to the Ba Ba Black Sheep song. So anyway, those were all a lot of fun. And um, before we go, let's do a few of our rhymes, our winter rhymes. We forgot to do those last time, I think. So let's do some. Can we pretend to walk in the snow? You can do this on your knees. I'm going to do this in the air. Here we go. Let's go walking in the snow. Good. Walking, walking on tiptoe. Can we go to tiptoes? Good. Then all around the Arby skip. Watch your step or you might slip. Oh, no. <laughs> let's do one more time. Here we go. Let's go walking in the snow, walking, walking on tiptoe, then all around the arm skip. Watch your step or you might slip. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. How about the chubby little snowman with the carrot nose? You ready? Chubby little snowman had a carrot nose. Along came a bunny. And what do you suppose? That hungry little bunny looking for his lunch snapped off the snowman's nose and ate it. Nibble, nibble, crunch, crunch. Because they like carrots, right? <laughs> All right, let's try one more time. Here we go. Chubby little snowman had a carrot nose. Along came a bunny, and what do you suppose? That hungry little bunny looking for his lunch snapped off the snowman's nose and ate it. Nibble, nibble, crunch, crunch. No more carrot nose for the snowman, but that's okay. All right, everybody, I will see you next week. We'll be doing some more stories, more crafts, more songs, and I hope you have a great rest of the week. If you are ready to use your craft bag, if you got a craft bag from the library, we're going to be doing a hedgehog craft today. So please stick around after this and we'll do it together. Okay, so for our craft today, from your craft bag, you should have the brown paper cutout of a hedgehog, which was my favorite animal in the story we read to that the Mittener sang today. We're gonna have um, a darker brown piece of paper for you to trace your hand on to make some, some porcupine quills or hedgehog quills for your hedgehog. You need to have a little wiggle eye and a little pom-pom nose. And then you're gonna need to bring in your own scissors, glue, and some crayons, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take out a crayon, I'm gonna use a dark color so I can see it. I'm going to trace my hand on a folded over piece of paper. Okay, like that. Now your hands are smaller than mine, so yours is going to come out a lot smaller, but that's okay. You can even do more probably because you could probably fit in more hands. Okay, so I've got traced my hand on there. Doesn't have to be perfect. And now we're going to cut it out. Uh, I'm going to cut two pieces of paper at once. If you can't do that and you need some grown-up help or you want to do it one sheet at a time, that's okay too. Okay, so I've got my hands cut out, two of them. And I am going to glue those on to my hedgehog. And it doesn't really matter which side. Um, I'm going to pick any side and leave that at the back. Glue those on like that. And when you turn it over, those are the hedgehog's quills. Can you see that? <laughs> That's kind of fun. I like that. And then I'm going to put some glue on the eye and put that here. And I'm going to put some glue where the nose is going to go. Put that there. And maybe I will use a crayon. Draw a smiley face. 
You could draw little feet if you want to, little lines on the feet. You could put your name on it. You can add all kinds of details. I wonder if I could even draw, hmm. I don't know, maybe I'll draw an ear here. Okay, there we go. So I added some details to my porcupine. You could even do a whole sweater on there if you wanted to. I don't think I'm gonna do a sweater today. I don't trust my drawing skills today. But you can do that. And there we have our handprint hedgehog. And I hope that was fun for you. I enjoyed making that today with you. And I will see you next week with a new craft bag. All right. Bye.